Our lab is very interested in developing technologies that can allow an easier implementation of the ketogenic diet. I view there's a lot of buzz about exogenous ketones. I do not view exogenous ketones as a replacement for the diet. I view, I view these molecules, some people view them as drugs. I view them as food. They contain calories, you can mix them into food, and they can further boost and augment the therapeutic efficacy of the ketogenic diet. And different forms of the ketogenic diet now, we know, don't necessarily have to be as strict. And if we can develop various foods or ingredients and in foods and incorporate that into the diet, I think that can be helpful for people who are not willing or unable to follow a strictly ketogenic diet to get those therapeutic levels of ketones. A lot of people really do think that the development of ketone, exogenous ketone supplements could replace dietary therapies. And I think we're a long way off from that. We know that the ketogenic diet and other carbohydrate restricted, you know, low carb diets really change our metabolism in ways that would be difficult or impossible to replicate with uh, dietary ketone supplements. So I think it's important that people view supplements as just that a supplement to the ketogenic diet. The, the science is not there yet to support that people replace uh, a well-formulated ketogenic diet with a supplement. In some cases, uh, it's difficult for patients, certain patients to implement uh, the ketogenic diet, but I think dietitians are getting better at, at helping them do that. Um, and, you know, I think people, had a fear of the ketogenic diet from a classical ketogenic diet perspective with 90% fat, but like Dr. Eric Kossoff has advanced this idea of using a modified Atkins diet or a modified ketogenic diet, which is more liberal in protein and, uh, and is not as restrictive as earlier versions of the diet were. And I think as we move forward, we gain a greater understanding of the types of fats that could be used in the diet and the types of protein and uh, even things like the gut microbiome, how these things, I, we think that all these things can be optimized as we start to formulate different ketogenic diets for different people. And supplements are just a way to further increase ketone levels and maybe even lower blood glucose levels. And in some cases, elevating that ketone to a higher level can really enhance the efficacy of the ketogenic diet. So uh, I think we're not at the point now where supplements, even ketone esters, can replace the ketogenic diet, but we need to recognize these things as tools that can be incorporated into a comprehensive ketogenic therapy for certain disorders. And it may be different for epilepsy than it is for cancer, than it is for type two diabetes. And, and that's why we need to have experts in each field kind of vet out what's working, what's not working, so we can move towards guidelines and have a consensus, much like we do with epilepsy, on how to implement this. We need to have a consensus of a metabolic ketogenic therapy for cancer. And that was some meetings we had yesterday, at sort of a satellite conference here. The same thing needs to happen with type 2 diabetes and more mainstream sort of uh, common diseases.